Hey everybody, Mikey Cal here. This is not an official tutorial video. It's more a let's get ready to rumble video <laughs> because that's what I'm doing right now. I am testing out a new mic setup. I'm hoping that you guys like the audio on this. If you don't, or if you have some recommendations on how to better set up audio, that's an area where I really feel like I need to polish my my skill set in in rigging audio and stuff like that for for doing stuff like tutorials because i know that you know, there's, there's gonna be people listening to this stuff for quite some time i have tutorials from 2013 that people are listening to and they have to put up with any audio issues that i've uh, you know encountered so anything you guys can do if you have something uh, that you recommend for me to watch to help me um you know know how to set audio levels that would be very very helpful for me i find that um the, a good portion of the people who actually watch my tutorials often know a lot more about the uh, the recording process than I do. I really just know how to piece stuff together with Blender. Um, I'm really excited about uh, 2.81 uh, coming out. I think right now it's November 11th, I think, or 12th. And uh, I think we're going to be expecting the stable release of Blender sometime uh, by the end of November. And uh, I've been playing around with the betas. Uh, I like to actually check out to see what kind of things people are working on. And we have a bunch of stuff coming for the video editing portion of Blender that that some of them are, are just interesting. Other things are, um, are really cool. Uh, I know that we now have an official um, power sequencer community mod or community plugin that is going to uh, be another workflow that you can utilize for video editing. Uh, I have played around with Power Manager, or at least the one that is officially distributed with 2.81 beta. And I, I like some of the some of the options, but honestly, it's just a different workflow. It's not really going to give you a lot of extra abilities. And uh, I I am an, an old dog <laughs> you know, teaching me new tricks uh, when, I, that, when I can still do things the same way in Blender, I'm pretty much going to choose to do them that way because I, I've really gotten uh, accustomed to, to the shortcut uh, way of working with Blender. So uh, I may point out uh, how to activate the Power Sequencer mod somewhere in the series. But I think that I'm still going to focus on teaching the vanilla way of doing things in Blender. That seems to be, um, I think, what people come to my series for is they just want to know how things work without having to fiddle around with uh, stuff in, in the settings. Uh, the great thing about Blender 2.81 is now we have a new templating system that pretty much sets up everything for you right out of box. You just click the video editing template and you're ready to go. You don't have to go... Uh, messing around with a lot of settings. Having said that, uh, if you're a person who is also doing 3D on Blender, um, you're going to have to be aware that if you're not using the templating system, uh, you will have to go and make some uh, changes to some of the property settings. For example, with color management, uh, Blender 2.8 switched us to the filmic um, uh, option for color. And uh, apparently, I don't know a lot about uh, uh, how color management works, but uh, it is uh, it is apparently a, a, a superior option. That's why they've switched to it by default. But when using the template uh, for video editing, they purposely turn off color management and return to a, a different uh, standard um, way of, of managing color that they used in the previous version of Blender uh, in the 2.7 uh, uh, branch of, of Blender. And you'll notice that if you do not uh, use the right color management setting for video editing, that your render times will double, at least. Uh, the filmic option, uh, it may produce uh, it, it may produce a better representation of color when you're actually importing 3D uh, into uh, video, uh, but it, it, it takes quite uh, a lot of time to process by comparison to the old way. And for most people, they won't notice the difference, I think, that are most general users. 
So these are things I'm going to have to point out. Um, I'm also uh, starting to play around with some other cross-platform uh, open source options as well as some closed source options. For me, it's important that, um, that my viewers can have access to things that, things that don't really kind of encumber the, the, the experience. And, and you know, while there may be options out there that are commercial, uh, that will do things a lot faster or automate certain tasks, um, I realize that, that you wouldn't be here <laughs> looking, for, looking at this video right now on my channel um, if you just had, you know, endless amounts of money to spend on software. And so my way of giving back to, to the community and to open source software is to try to spend uh, time promoting um, uh, the options so that maybe we can get more attention on these projects. And maybe there's some developer out there who just happens upon this and says, you know what, I, I think I can actually contribute and and help to make this an even better product. And I'm, I'm starting to see that already. Now that, um, I guess, as of 2.8, we have a new maintainer for the video sequencer over at Blender. Um, and we have people who are now uh, really promoting, uh, enhancing the features for the video editor. Um, like I said earlier, the, uh, the power sequencer uh, is, is a community mod that is bringing some attention uh, to to Blender, uh, uh, getting some more polished work done on the video sequencer. So while I don't really care for the workflow of Power Sequencer, I am an, a huge supporter of the people who are doing anything to try to add features or improve the experience of Blender. So um, I also I want to be very supportive of those people, even if I'm not using their workflows, um, because you know sometimes they're working on it. Maybe they'll work on uh, speeding up our render times, maybe making it multi-core. We wouldn't, <laughs> currently we're, we're all using scripts in order to actually do multi-core renders with video editing. I would love to see that fixed. I don't know what the barrier is to it. Maybe it's just interest. Maybe there's not enough developers over there. But you know, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm trying to just attract people um, uh, to this project to teach people how to use um, community um, Community resources, um, open source software, uh, things that are that is that are unencumbered that enable um, you without getting in your way, um, and also you know bringing attention uh, for people to report bugs so they can be fixed. I've reported some bugs just even previous to um, to the series I'm about to do. I've been spending most of my time just trying to fix the bugs that I'm seeing in 2.8. Um, and some of them have been fixed. Uh, some of them are just nuisances um, that I've I've been told I just have to deal with. I just have to I have to work I have to create a workaround basically. Um, so uh, <laughs> you know we we work with what we have. So I'm really excited to be working um, uh, on the next series. As you can see, I'm prepping. I got my my blue screen here. I got my my AKG Perception mic. Um, I got you know. I'm trying to just get everything uh, situated in such a way that I can just sit in my seat and I can just get to work. And y you'll find um, that one of the biggest barriers to doing um, tutorials or doing any videos is just having to deal with setup time. And uh, like I used to do a lot of you know recording for music and stuff like that for myself. And I would find that I would spend, I don't know, like five minutes trying to get my mics all configured, getting all the levels all set up. And then by the time I sat down and started to play, I'd play for like two minutes and I'd just be like already out of the mood. I need to get uh, my setup um, so that I can basically just drop into it and just turn it on. And if I can do that, um, I'm going to be much more uh, motivated. So these are all the little hacks that I find that I have to do is just like try, try to try to make it as easy as possible for you to to take advantage of the moments where you're where you have the energy to to do things. So um, I'm looking forward to the series. Uh, if you guys have any um, uh, input on things that may improve the quality of my recording. I don't have one of those ring lights um, for for lighting, for example, but I do have a bunch of happy lights. I don't know if you guys know what happy lights are, but they're those 
those mood disorder lights that you <laughs> that you that you uh, um, uh, that people have bought. I mean, they still buy, but I, I think I bought it because it was like you know thinking um, you know, seasonal depression. What do they call it when you don't have enough uh, sunlight? So you buy these lights that actually emulate the sunlight. I have them. They're kind of heavy. I'm trying to figure out if I can actually place them in a way that maybe uh, lights things a little bit better. Uh, I also want to let you guys know that you're not going to be staring at my face at this size in my tutorial. Uh, I'm going to try, let's see what I can do. I'm going to see if I can maybe, I'll, it'll probably be more like this um, when I'm doing it. These, all, these are all things, I, I actually asked the community if you guys wanted to see my face uh, during the tutorials. And I was expecting everybody to be like, yeah, we don't need to see your face. <laughs> but I found that people actually preferred to be able to see uh, the teacher, you know. And uh, so I, I'm going to stick with it. Um, so I guess I um, will see you guys in a, a, a tutorial video very, very soon. Take it easy. See you in the next video.